work on a super yacht, move up through the ranks and maximise your potential. Hello and welcome back to work on a super yacht. As you can see, it's another glorious day behind me, the kind of day that you might want to go and do a bit of dog walking. That is exactly what we're going to do in Monaco, but before I leave the boat or you leave the crew house or the apartment, there's a few things that we need to get prepared. First of all, we need to think about what we're wearing, and in this case, I am not leading by example. Truth be told, short of actually putting on the yacht uniform, I don't actually possess clothing that is suitable to go dog walking in. However, I can advise that for girls, this is going to be a polo shirt, a blouse, or a shirt, all with a collar, and shorts or a skirt. And for guys, a polo shirt and shorts. In terms of colours, you want it to be fairly understated. Whites, greys, blues. But don't be afraid to accessorise with a little bit of colour. Maybe something of contrast on your belt, for example. On your feet, you'll want something like a pair of deck shoes. Or for girls, maybe a decent pair of sandals. I can't help thinking that if you're wearing flip-flops or thongs, you're probably not giving quite the right impression. In terms of hair, you want to make sure that it's tidy and well-groomed and that it stays that way throughout the day. Guys, make sure you're clean-shaven or if you do wish to have a bit of a beard or stubble, make sure that it's well-groomed. Lastly, take a moment to think about your body language. First off, you'll most likely be wearing a pair of sunglasses, but when you're speaking to someone, make sure you take them off. You'll often see me squinting in a lot of these videos, even though I've got a pair of sunglasses on my head. The reason being that only when you can actually see my eyes can you really engage properly. You want to be smiling, no hands in pockets or crossed arms. You want to be open and friendly. So stand up straight, shoulders back, nice and confident. Would you rather employ this person or this person. Next up I've got my backpack with me. Let's just have a look at the contents. A bottle of water and some snacks. Thank you to the chef for keeping me well stocked in only the most intense varieties. Remember that the days can be long, hot and tiring, so you'll want to make sure that you've got plenty of snacks with you to keep you energised. Buy these in advance from the supermarket and you'll save on having to eat out. Sun cream. You don't want to finish the day looking like a lobster. Charger for your phone. Most of the trains have charging points. Just make sure you've got the correct adapter. A change of clothes and some deodorant. As I said before, the days can get very long. You don't want to finish up approaching yachts at the end of the day when you're looking all bedraggled. Places such as Monaco have plenty of decent public toilets that you can always pop into to freshen up. Unfortunately, new for 2020, hand sanitizer, a pair of gloves, and a mask to keep yourself and others safe. A notebook and a pen, that always comes in handy. And finally, a folder for the more important documents, such as passport. The name is not for my benefit, but rather the captain, who's got loads of passports in his safe. If not a passport, then definitely some other form of government ID. And lastly, the all important CV. Now I'm no expert on CVs, so I'm not going to try and teach you how to write yours, but just a few tips. Make sure you've used the space well, not too cluttered, but at the same time not too spread out that it looks like you've never actually done anything. In addition, make sure that the formatting is uniform throughout, and make sure that it's up to date. When I say up to date, I don't mean trying to save on printing credits by doing things such as this, scribbling out phone numbers to put your nice new mobile number in or jotting extra information on the top. As far as I'm concerned, that just looks really sloppy. So, before
before you head out, make sure everything's updated and you've printed out new copies. Also, think about the paper that the CV is printed on. This is just normal printer paper and it's not very super yacht. Remember that yacht crew are used to dealing with quality materials, so make them feel right at home with your CV. If nothing else, you'll be one of the minority doing this, so it'll make your CV stand out. Other ways to stand out? How about putting your updated CV printed on decent paper in a decent envelope with a nice cover letter? Even better, how about tailoring your CV to the boat in question? I must recall a great story from my friend Elliot, who I know is subscribed and I hope is watching. Three years ago, he approached a yacht where the captain happened to be standing on the passerelle. The captain joked that if he gave him his CV, he'd probably just throw it in the water. A joke, to be sure, but Elliot took him at his word. He went away, laminated a CV, attached a float to it and returned the next day. Who do you think got called up when a job became available? This guy or Elliot? Three years later and Elliot has only just left that fantastic yacht and exceptional crew, taking with him a wealth of experience for his future career. Now you may be thinking, isn't this all going to take an awful lot of time and a lot of money? Keep on printing out my CV, buying the decent paper, maybe laminating copies, envelopes, but if it nets you even just one day of day work at 100 euros a day, it'll have probably already paid for itself. Right, now we've got all that covered, I think we're ready to go. Part of dock walking is getting to each of the docks in the first place. To be clear, this video is being filmed after travel restrictions due to COVID-19 have thankfully been lifted. I'm currently based in Italy, which means first thing is to get to the train station. Let's see how we get on. Beware of pickpockets. In case of need, ask only Trenitalia staff for more information. Signorina, non si chiedo scusa, ho timbrato 1220, la posso prendere quello di 45, quello prima? In Italy and France, it's not enough just to buy the ticket. You also have to validate it. Buy it, validate it, then get on the train. Otherwise, you might end up with a hefty fine. The first stop is Ventimiglia, which is the change point between trains running through Italy and trains running through France. In order to maximise your chances of finding that first job, you'll want to be dock walking in both Italy and France, so you should get to know this station really quite well. I've got about 25 minutes to wait here, which is fairly typical. So it's off to platform two to get the train on down to Monaco. Don't forget to validate that second ticket. Oh, 
From here, it's just a straight run down to Monaco. This is Monton Garabin, which is the first stop into France, and you often have to wait here a little bit longer than normal for the French police to do their own security checks. And here we are in Monaco, and like all things Monaco, the station is really quite something. They even have Villaroy and Boch in the toilets. You better believe that they're using some pretty high quality materials in the tunnels too. And here we are, that's the port behind me and now that I'm clear of the public transport, I think I can take that off. There are in fact three ports here, Port Hercule, the biggest and the one that you're going to be most interested in, but you've also got Port de Fonvier and Actually, in France, just outside of Monaco, cat die. My battery and my time will only allow me to check out Port Hercule today, but I suggest you check out all three. Of course, it won't be long before you see all manner of fancy cars, but don't get distracted, we've got work to do. As you can see, you can walk straight down to the port right next to the boats here and you might remember this corner from one very special Formula One race. Check your map and you'll see that like most marinas, Port Hercule is arranged in a big U shape. So it's a good idea to be systematic and simply walk from one end to the next. We'll start by heading up towards the Yacht Club which is just over my left shoulder to see what's going on. Okay, so here I am at the starboard side entrance to the port. My aim is to start right here and simply walk all the way around past the yacht club all the way around, walking up any finger key available as I go round, all the way to the other side. On the opposite side there is the cruise ship terminal. I've just come 
come down here out of the wind for a bit to run through a few more things before we get started. Just to be clear, I'm not actually going to go and ask any of these yachts if they've got any work. That's for a few reasons. Firstly, I'm not looking for work. Secondly, it would be a complete waste of their time. And thirdly, as I said before, I'm not dressed correctly. I'm going to level with you here and say that I always did find this process really quite daunting. And you might too. The only advice I can offer is just to say, get started. Because the more and more you do it, the more comfortable you'll feel with it. You'll start to develop your own style, and with any luck, you'll start to embody the enthusiasm and motivation you have for wanting to start a career on a super yacht. Then, once you've got that down, everything you do and everything you say will be authentic, and people typically respond really well to that. The key is to develop a rapport with someone in the shortest time possible, because sometimes you'll only have between about 30 seconds and a minute. If you're wondering which yachts to approach, I would say all of them. However, don't approach a yacht that appears to have guests on board. Good indicators of this can mean that the crew were in full uniform, with collars on their shirts, possibly even epaulettes. There would normally be fresh flowers on the main deck aft, and you would see that all of the furniture was uncovered. Needless to say, the crew will be exceptionally busy at this time, and they won't take kindly to you if you interrupt them. That being said, timing is everything, and provided you've established that the yacht does not have guests on board, if you turn up between the hours of approximately half past seven and eight o'clock in the morning, you should normally find the deck crew having their morning meeting on the main deck aft. This can be a really good time to catch them. It goes without saying that you can't be at every single marina between the hours of half past seven and eight o'clock. So, Either choose different ones on different days, or if you're trying to string together a number of marinas one after the other, don't be afraid to continue trying throughout the day. However, I would caution you against trying between the hours of 12 noon and one o'clock, because this is typically lunchtime. By five o'clock, most yachts have finished up for the day, and after this time, you'll typically only be able to speak to the watchkeeper or watch keepers. If you try ringing the bell and you wait, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and still, nobody answers. My advice would be to not tuck your CV under the mat at the end of the passerelle, as so many people often do. There is a very good chance that it will get lost amongst a load of other CVs, stepped on, maybe a little bit wet, joined by some marketing material, and stepped on a couple more times. Then, when somebody does eventually pick up your CV, it'll just be one of many crumpled pieces of paper and look a little bit like that. And I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna offer anybody a job based on that. And unfortunately, that's gonna go straight in the bin. Instead, try again a little bit later on or on another day. And if you really, really can't do that, because if you've gone to a marina that you're never going to go to ever again, then have a backup plan. Maybe you've got some laminated copies, or some copies inside an envelope. That way, if you do leave it under the mat, it will stand out amongst all of the other CVs and possible marketing material that might have been dropped there. With all that said, I think it's time we get started. Okay, so that's the first line of yachts walked, every single one, an opportunity. Just over my right shoulder there, you can see the yacht club, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. And just there, those little white flags, that's where the touch and go point is. If you do manage to land that job, and you are driving the tender, that's likely while you'll be picking up and dropping off the guests. Now walking down alongside the yacht club, and you can see there, my left hand side, that yacht. It's got all the awnings up, flowers on the aft deck, everything's uncovered. You can expect that they've got guests on. Still walking alongside the yacht club, it really is quite massive. 
and then we're going to head down this key here. That's the second line of yachts walked, and you can see just over my right shoulder there is exactly where we started. We can now loop around the end of this key and walk the yachts back down the other side. This yacht coming into view here clearly has guests on board. You can see there's somebody standing on the aft deck, a member of crew. They say you wouldn't want to go asking them for work just now. Just skipped a couple of yachts there. They clearly had guests on board. You always want to be discreet. You don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. You don't want to be waving a camera around while someone's trying to enjoy their holiday. And that leads us back down to the end of the Yacht Club. Just coming up here now because it gives us a good view of where we still need to go. You have the infamous tunnel there which leads on down to the chicane at the bottom of the hill. We can continue walking the dock and head along this key. Okay, so here we are. There seem to be quite a lot of barriers up around the port at the moment, but if you walk around them, you can still get access to the yachts. And there again, you can see that third line of yachts that we walked down. Looking back, you can see that yachts get a little bit thin on the ground as we come around this radius. So I shall make my way over to the Tiki, where you see those larger yachts on the other side of the water. Here I am with the tea key or jetty just behind me, so called because it is shaped like a tea. There is currently quite a lot of guest activity on this key, so I'm not going to film the whole of it, but as you can see, quite a number of large yachts on it. So if you can get down here without disturbing anyone, then it's a good idea to do so. Walking down to the end here, it is possible to see our final destination with the yachts over there just across the water. Having now walked all the way around to the other side of the port, I have the cruise ship terminal entrance behind me and just down this quay is where the last few yachts are.
There's my right shoulder there. Are those large shots on the end of the tiki where we didn't do so much filming. And here we are, all the way on the other side of the port from which we started. As you can see, we are really, really lucky to have access to all these yachts in Monaco. But it does come with the responsibility that if you do go dock walking, you are courteous, you look out to see whether or not owners are using the boat, and whether or not it's a good time to approach the crew to ask if they've got any work available. You might sometimes feel like a nuisance, but at the end of the day, we need you, and we need your excitement and enthusiasm for the industry. Yachts are always looking for good, energetic crew who can help benefit their team. If you can demonstrate that you're one of them, you'll be in with a good chance of succeeding on your dock walks. As always, I really do hope that you've enjoyed and learned something from this video and that it's given you a better idea of what to expect when you go dock walking. If that is the case, please hit that like button. Please also hit that subscribe button because I've got loads of great new ideas for the channel and with you guys leaving yet more great ideas in the comment section below. There'll be plenty of good stuff to come. If you have asked me to do a video on a particular subject, bear with me. At the end of the day, the day job takes up most of my time, but I do really enjoy working on this channel and I will get to it when I can. My train back is leaving very shortly, so I've got to go, but I look forward to seeing you next time.